Okay, I saw a lot of people who bought hybrids, or, uh, sorry, plug-in hybrids, okay, plug-in hybrids. This problem, this problem only persists for plug-in hybrid customers, right, or people who buy uh, BMW 330e, Mercedes 350e, uh, Volvo T8s, and uh, any other hybrids out there, plug-in hybrids, okay, a Porsches for that matter. Uh, they ask when my car was fully charged, right? It shows 32 km instead of 40. You know, because I remember when I first bought the car, it says 40, or the brochure says 40. Now you have to think. Just imagine you are the engineer of uh, these companies, right? Will you program in a logic that monitors how you usually drive your usual driving pattern and create an average uh, consumption or, or electric consumption? That means to best predict how far you can go or you will just put the standard 40 means 40. You get what I mean? Now let's put it this way. Uh, we're very used to our petrol engines and you also know that if this person is heavy footed if he's very heavy footed his car will know his consumption pattern so when he refill the car fully his car might be showing 500 km whereas another friend who drives very frugally always drives long distance his car will be showing 650 km same full tank it's the same logic because the car maker wants to give you the most accurate representation of your usage in order for you to, to help you gauge, right? If not, then you would have a mismatch of expectations. That means you see the car showing 40, but then when you go 28 and it's done, it's finished, right? The reason for this is that it's a very simple reason. It's just that people don't connect the dots. Let's say you love cycling. Okay, if you cycle on a road like this, very straight, very flat, you can cycle further than when you cycle uphill or a mixture of roads, right? So the problem with all this gauging mechanism is that you can't really give the most accurate gauge. You can only give a rough estimation, okay? And the road conditions are completely different. And the car makers wouldn't be able to know whether you stay in Gotong Jaya or you stay in freaking Satya Alam with all the flat roads or you stay in Puchong every time in the jam. They wouldn't be able to gauge that. So they can only give you the, the rough translation of the battery power in your battery, right? So they can't give you a figure that says uh, 12 kilowatt, even though they state that, right? 12 kilowatt means what? You can't really tell what does it means. But 12 kilowatt in a 2.2 ton XC90 would be translated to roughly 30 something km if it were a flat road. An absolute flat road that you are there, fully charged. That means immediately after you plug off from your charger, charging point, you can roll straight at a constant speed Right, a moderate speed and you can achieve that kind of mileage that all of them can do but everyone stays in a different place some place that you stay you go high speed then you go low speed you go downhill then you uphill there is a mixture that's why the computer would gauge based on your usage right you can get 31 or he can get 33 yeah so that's the reason if you really want to test whether your battery is still able to give you 40 then you continuously find you, you find a flat road a straight flat road you install a charger there then you charge then you drive straight 40 km then you charge again you drive straight 40 km yeah that is roughly what uh, they can do and of course if you really want further mileage you go and change your tires to some uh, not so sticky see uh, tires you change to some like Michelin energy XM2 or something right those are low rolling resistance tires you 
you're going to be able to roll further. So that explains why your hybrid charge will display different uh, kilometer range as you start using it. It is not a deterioration of your battery yet. Why I say yet? Because battery by default, be it a nickel cadmium battery or a lithium ion battery, battery will experience chemical deterioration. All right, the first day you start using it, they already start to deteriorate slowly. Okay, that is the technology barrier of battery as a form of energy carrier, they deteriorate. All right, so I hope I get this clear for all the hybrid owners out there. Don't panic, it's just your usage that the car determines this is the most accurate representation of what you can achieve. All right, uh, what else? should i add into this in terms of uh hybrid usage if you have any questions uh do ask me oh there's another thing another thing that goes around that says that oh you know certain brand right the battery you can take out the battery is not one unit it's actually uh individual uh, packets in there that uh, if that packet is faulty we can take that out and change it theoretically yes and theoretically no not theoretically by um, every single big battery pack okay every single giant battery pack is a combination of small batteries small little packs in there why if I want to explain then uh, it is something to do with the, the, the filaments that the, the electrons travel to and from, right? The more you have, the more capacity you can generate. Basically, that's, that's how it is. And that's the fundamental architecture of batteries. And of course, you have cylindrical ones, you have packet ones, you know, things like that. Packet ones, you can route uh, cooling uh, in between them, yada, yada, yada. But what I want to say is this argument that my brand's hybrid battery can be fixed by buying individual packs. Actually, every battery is like that. All right. If you have the technical capacity, the techni technical knowledge to open up a hybrid battery pack, which is, which is very, very securely sealed because it's not just battery in there. There's cooling uh, stuffs in there. Right? If you can open those packs and then you can you can find which has deteriorated or which one is faulty and then you take out that one and you change that one, then that applies to every single car brand out there, every single plug-in hybrid brand out there. It applies, it is the same if you have the technical capacity. But the, 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 the flaw in this argument is they are trying to make the customer believe that the deterioration of a hybrid battery is because of individual packs getting faulty and not the entire deterioration. That is a very flawed and uh, I would say is 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 a how do I put this? Uh, it's a it's a wrong way of misguiding the consumer to believe that this is how uh, battery deterioration happens. No, okay. Your remote control, you have four tri AAA batteries in there. After using for two years, your remote control seems to be not really working all the time. Sometimes you need to, you know, give it a quick knock, knock the electrons loose from the from the chemically block. Uh, I don't know how to put it to explain it further, okay? But basically, they're blocked, okay? You can knock it a bit and then it, it, it generates a bit of electricity, right? It's because that's how batteries deteriorate. And all four of them deteriorate together, right? It's not that after two years, you found that your 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 remote control is not that, that responsive anymore. You buy one AAA to replace one triple a and you expect the full capacity no in fact if you put a healthy battery working together with three unhealthy batteries it will immediately reduce the capacity of the healthy battery right 
we all experience that we all know that when it's done you have to change all four together at one go that is why certain car makers do not agree to even communicate that we can actually open up your battery pack and change that little pack nonsense when your battery deteriorates you change the entire thing provided when you buy the car there is really a, a weird 0.0 something percent chance that that particular packet is faulty because they are mass produced anyway maybe one of them wasn't sealed nicely maybe just maybe and that packet they are able to determine to 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 test every single packet in there to tell that this one is the one that is creating the problem then under warranty they change that one packet for you if that's the case then that is a solid argument if not uh, the argument that after six seven years our brand you only need to change the individual pack is absolute nonsense it is absolute nonsense whichever salesman that tells you that he is he is maybe misguided or he doesn't know the the, 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 the actual thing about it that is not the case okay it's not that after six seven years your battery capacity is down you just need to bring it there and they change the faulty not not faulty the the pre-deteriorated ones bullshit all right let's get that out batteries deteriorate and they deteriorate together provided there is a warranty claim of fault or something all right oh that's a bad take uh. Yep, that's all I want to talk about today about plug-in hybrid cars. Oh, another last thing to add. If you ask me, is a hybrid car more complicated and more susceptible to problems? Yes, of course. 100% compared to a petrol engine. Yes. Why? Your petrol engine is just like your cooking stove and your gas tank, right? You plug in your gas tank, boom, tap, tap, tap your fire comes up that's it but your hybrid car is like your gym equipment you go and install a dynamo there instead of a wheel and then when you exercise it generates electricity it goes through a control unit the control unit goes to a battery and then the battery goes through another control unit and that control unit goes through your electric stove and then when you cook your electric stove uh, you want to adjust to a higher temperature range that will inform the control unit the control unit will inform the battery to send more power and then it will send more power over there and then the battery will let the other control unit knows that uh, it's coming down on power it can accept charges now because you can't indefinitely keep charging the battery so your gym equipment when you exercise and then it fully charges the control unit will tell your gym will, will actually cut off the power to not let it charge the battery anymore there are so many components in between the energy source and the output of course there will be instances whereby certain software glitches or certain uh, electrical glitches might happen so a plug-in hybrid car in my opinion is the most sophisticated form of car that we have ever produced in the history of car making it is the most complicated because you are you are having an electronic system constantly talking interacting with an analog system which is the the petrol combustion engine with your gearbox and then with the electric motor and how to interact in between how to seamlessly transfer power if you drive it a driven a plug-in hybrid you can roll off in electric halfway you took on if the fire the engine fires in but then when the engine fires in it's able to seamlessly support the electric output and then after a while when you reach high speed the electric motor will shut down and then just leaving your your petrol engine jet engine alone and then it doesn't disrupt you all these are hyper complicated okay below uh, plug-in hybrid cars the next complicated ones will be our traditional petrol combustion engine with your engine with your alternator with your starter motor with your uh, torque converter your transmission your pumps your belts all these things a lot of stuff going on in front as well but they're all mechanically connected all right of course with some control units now with the modern engines right to be fuel saving to be clean and all that and then the simplest one would be electric cars electric cars is just a battery wires connect the battery to control unit control unit to the 
electric motor, electric motor connected to your wheels, that's it. Yeah. So, yes. Plug-in hybrid cars will have more little issues compared to your usual petrol combustion engine, but they have improved a lot and and I think those that were produced four or five years ago and now has been updated, they are practically sort of problem free but the potential for it to go wrong is higher it is the same as uh, uh, if you have a house with a, a smart system right all your lights all your fans all these are connected to a central control unit and the central control unit uh, is connected to Wi-Fi and then you can use your phone use an app to on the lights to switch off the fans and you can even set uh, uh, on what time it, the, the aircon will automatically start and stuff like that compared to an isolated system where this switch controls this fan this switch controls this light yeah